As I return from feeding the street kids, I'm frustrated. The needs here in Nairobi are overwhelming. I want to help everyone, and yet I feel like I'm burning out. Everyone looks to me to meet the needs of the people in the church, and yet my heart beats to get my congregation to catch a vision to minister outside the compound at Good Shepherd Church. I am so hungry, and I haven't eaten in two days. Everything changed since my dad died. My mom doesn't have a job. It's difficult to provide for my six brothers, and work is not easy to come by. My mom could not pay my school fees, and last week, my teacher kicked me out of class. Education was my only hope to get out of Kibera. I want to be back in school. I want to eat some food. I just wish my life was normal. I am grateful for the work of the missionaries and the foundation that they laid. But this continent needs a faith that goes beyond saving souls and going to heaven. The church body needs to have an active role in meeting the needs of the community. Just a thousand meters from my church is Kibera, the largest slum in Africa. People are coming to Christ there. But at the end of the day, they return and face the same challenges. We need to do more than offer salvation. But I cannot do it alone. I'm about to give up trying to change traditions that stagnate the church. So many people walked by as I sat begging to get money for food. One man took me seriously and offered me something more. He told me he could not give me money, but if I came by his church later, he would arrange for me to go back to school. Later that day, I came over to Good Shepherd Church. We talked and the pastor agreed to send me to school again. I was surprised to see a church that was willing to meet my needs. I had heard about the love of Jesus, but no one had ever shown it to me. I did not know how the church was going to pay for Edward's education. When the missionaries were here, the church was funded from the West. Now that they are gone, we have little money to pay for my salary and church expenses. A congregation never had to tithe in order to pay the pastor's salary. But things are looking up. Recently, a missionary from Nigeria with CRM Africa started coaching me and helping me to focus on what God wants for my church. For the first time, I was able to implement what God had put on my heart for years. Things like church planting and empowering our leaders to live out their calling. I feel like I can focus on leading from my gifting instead of what everybody thinks I should do. Ili and I talk about what would happen if the whole church was empowered to meet the needs of the community. He helps me to have the courage to do things differently and challenge the status quo that has kept the church from ministering holistically in our neighborhood. I dream of a church across Africa that provides African solution to African problems. We need real empowerment of African leaders in the church and our communities. When the locals are empowered, then the local church is able to do what it was cut out to do, reach the people. I was so glad to be back in school and to see my friends. School is hard, but I know it is the gateway to a brighter future. Maybe now I'll even be able to go to university and study computers. It has been an incredible journey. Edward just graduated from high school. Ilya's ministry is helping me to change, and then in turn, 
helping my church change. One by one, I'm training leaders in our church to catch the vision. Ultimately, the vision of the church will change. Then we will be one step closer to providing African solutions to African problems.